Hypercube. In one-dimensional or 1D space, a line segment is bounded by two points. In 2D space, a square is bounded by four line segments, if we include the inside region as part of the square. In 3D space, a cube is bounded by six squares. All of these objects are known as hypercubes, the generalization of a cube to an arbitrary number of dimensions. The objects forming the boundary of each one are called the hypercube's facets. Each next hypercube has copies of the previous hypercube as its facets. After 3D, we can keep going into 4D space, though this is hard to visualize in a three-dimensional world. In 4D, we have the Tesseract, bounded by eight cubes. Then after that, the hypercubes stop having special names, so we resort to a numbering scheme. An n-dimensional hypercube is called an n-cube. So, the cube is a three-cube, the tesseract is a four-cube, then we have the five-cube, the six-cube, and so on toward infinity. Hypercubes are a special case of polytopes, the generalization of polygons and polyhedra to any number of dimensions. We can measure each hypercube by its hypervolume, the generalization of volume. Assuming an n-dimensional hypercube of side length s, its hypervolume is s to the power of n. In 0d, we have a point, which is a zero cube. This gives us a hypervolume of s to the power of zero, which is just one, which makes sense because there's one point there. Although that may seem like silly logic, this is actually the mathematical meaning of a 0d measure. Just count the points. As for 1d, a line segment has a hypervolume, that being length here, of s to the power of 1, or just s. This essentially means that a line segment of length s has a length of s. Continuing, the area of a square of side length s is s squared, the volume of a cube is s cubed, the 4d hypervolume of a tesseract is s to the fourth power, etc. Hypersphere and hyperball. In two-dimensional space, every point on a circle is the same distance away from the center. The distance is known as the circle's radius. The same goes for the sphere and its radius in three-dimensional space. A hypersphere is the generalization of this concept to work in any number of dimensions. For instance, the version in 1D space is simply the set of two points equidistant from a midpoint, with that distance being the radius. In the other direction, Versions of this concept also exist in 4D, 5D, 6D, etc., though these are hard to visualize. The interior of a hypersphere is called a hyperball. For instance, a disk, the interior of a circle, is a hyperball, and a ball, the interior of a sphere, is a hyperball. A hyperball is closed if its bounding hypersphere is a part of it, and open otherwise. Clarification about dimension number. In mathematical terms, the dimension of an object is the number of degrees of freedom you have to move on it. A circle exists in two dimensions of space, but it is a one-dimensional object, as you only have one degree of freedom on it, along the circle. You can also think of an object's dimension in terms of the measure you would use for it. Length, area, volume, and so on. The circle is a curve, so it is measured by its length, circumference, making it one-dimensional. A hypersphere of dimension n can be called an n-sphere, and a hyperball of dimension n an n-ball, so a circle is a one-sphere and a disk a two-ball. A hypersphere can be described as the set of points satisfying a certain equation. For instance, in one-dimensional space, a pair of points of radius r is described by x squared equals r squared, giving both points on the x-axis that are a distance of r from the origin. A circle of radius r centered at the origin can be described by the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and a square of radius r is given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared. We can't keep using new letters for higher dimensional space because we'd run out, so let's use numbered x's, x1, x2, etc. The general equation in n-dimensional space can be written with some notation like this. The corresponding closed hyperball contains all the points whose distance from the center is at most r, so it is described by this inequality. Finally, the formulas for n-ball and n-sphere hypervolume look like this. Polytope. 
As previously mentioned, polytopes generalize polyhedra to any number of dimensions. These are not very interesting in 0D and 1D. They are just points and line segments, respectively. In 2D, we have the concept of a polygon, with line segments as edges. You are probably familiar with the usual polygons. Triangles, quadrilaterals, pentagons, and so on. Jumping up to 3D, a polyhedron is an object that has polygons as its faces. The most famous of the polyhedra is the platonic solids. The regular tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. As you might have guessed, a 4D polytope, a polychoron, has 3D polyhedra as its facets. In fact, we have a special name for 3D facets. Cells. So we would say, for instance, that the tesseract has 8 cubic cells. The concept of a face can also be generalized, which we call an M face, where M is the dimension of the object in question. Take a cube, for instance. It has 8 vertices, 12 edges, 6 faces, and then there is the cube itself. Thus, its 0 face number is 8, its 1 face number is 12, its 2 face number is 6, and its 3 face number is 1. A facet of an n polytope is simply an n minus 1 face of that polytope. If, for all m, each of the m faces of a given polytope can be moved to another m face while resulting in an identical shape, then the polytope is called a regular polytope. The point is the single 0d regular polytope, and the line segment the single 1d polytope. There are infinitely many regular polygons, or 2D polytopes. As for 3D, the convex regular polyhedra, those being regular polyhedra that don't dent inward, are the five platonic solids. There are six regular polychora, and in 5D and beyond, there are always exactly three regular polytopes. Simplex. What is the simplest possible polytope? the one with the least facets in each number of dimensions. 0D has the point, 1D has the line segment bounded by two points, 2D has the triangle bounded by three line segments, and 3D has the tetrahedron bounded by four triangles. In each case, the n simplex can be formed by taking the n minus one simplex, drawing a new point somewhere else and connecting all the vertices of the n minus one simplex to that new point. If all vertices are the same distance from each other, then the simplex will always be a regular simplex. In 4D, we have a simplex called the 5 cell, or the 4 simplex. A cell is a 3D facet of a polytope. The 5 cells of the 5 cell are tetrahedra. The regular 5 cell is one of the 6 regular polychora. Then in 5D is the 5 simplex with 6 facets. 6D has the 6 simplex with 7 facets and so on. In general, the n simplex has n plus 1 facets. In fact, an even more interesting pattern emerges in relation to a concept called Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is a pattern of numbers constructed as follows. Start with an infinite row of tiles, filling in one of the tiles with the number 1 and the rest with 0. Now, draw the next row of tiles with the tiles staggered so each new tile is right under two previous tiles. Fill in each tile with the sum of the numbers in the above two tiles. Keep drawing new rows with the same rules forever, and the non-zero tiles form Pascal's triangle. Let's list out the number of m faces of an n simplex. These can be listed in a table, putting each value in the mth column and nth row. The values here may look familiar. They are the values from Pascal's triangle, except without the infinite string of ones on the left. Due to the relation of Pascal's triangle with binomial expansion and combinatorics, the number of m faces of an n simplex may be expressed as the binomial coefficient n plus 1 choose m plus 1, meaning the number of ways to choose m plus 1 objects from a group of n plus 1 objects. Hyperplane. A line is a flat object that can split a plane into two parts, called half planes. A plane itself is a flat object that can split a 3D space into two parts, called half spaces. If we're a little generous with our use of the word flat to just mean non-curvy, then a point is a flat object that can split a line into two parts, called 
half lines or rays. The generalization of this concept to higher dimensions is known as a hyperplane. To be more specific, a hyperplane in an n-dimensional space is a subspace, meaning a space contained entirely within the original space, with dimension n-1. The concept of a subspace will be familiar to those who have taken a linear algebra course. In particular, linear algebra gives us vectors, objects with a direction and magnitude, representable by an arrow. Vectors are a very useful tool for describing lines, planes, and 3D spaces. Information about a point's position in space can be encoded in a vector that points from the origin to that point. Since a hyperplane is itself a space, if it includes the origin, then it can be represented by a set of vectors, called a vector space. A vector space must satisfy a certain set of rules. It must have the zero vector, the sum of two vectors must be in the space, and any scalar multiple of a vector must be in the space. A subspace that includes the origin is called a linear subspace. However, if we do not want to restrict ourselves to this, we can generalize to affine subspaces. These can be obtained by simply starting with a linear subspace and translating, or shifting, it through space. And it is this process that can give us any desired hyperplane.